All right, so I'm here today. If I can get this thing out of here. Come on. Go. I'm here today because I want to review the assessment that I worked on last night. Uh, I did this ver fairly completely, uh, but I wanted to do it again as a breakout video uh, so that you don't have to go through the entire video if you want to see this. There's quite a few steps involved in doing this, and I just wanted to make sure that you have the best opportunity <clears throat> to understand how this whole thing works. And it's basically a layout. You're going to be laying out a page, and you're going to be specking type and creating several uh, style sheets. All right? So... I'm going to skip some of the front end stuff like creating the document and putting in the um, columns, margins, and whatnot. But I am going to quickly show you the settings, and I'm going to show you where you can go to see these settings. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the file menu, and I'm going to go down to document setup. All right, so it's file, document setup. With that, I get the document setup dialog box. And the first thing to note is that I have the intent of this document to be set up to print. The number of pages I have is only one because we're only creating one page. And basically the size of the letter, the size of the page is letter, letter size. Now there's a bunch of presets in here that are very useful, but in our case, we're just setting up a basic letter page. All right, the width is eight and a half and the height is 11, which means the orientation is portrait. Now, the last thing that we have to worry about is the bleed and the slug. So I've made a setting of 0.125 and I've linked the setting so that all four of them are 0.125. And that gives me a bleed all around the outside edge, which we are not using in this particular document but I'm doing it because I want to show you how to do it. And whenever I create a document, I usually put a bleed in anyway, even if I'm not using it. Final thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a half of an inch of slug. That slug is that blue line out there. That blue line gives me a little space for printer's marks. So those are the document setup um, settings. I'm going to hit cancel because obviously I'm just showing you this. All right. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to set up margins and columns. Now, that's a separate uh, dialog box, and I go to the layout menu for that dialog box, and I go down to margins and columns. And the margins and columns dialog box comes up, and uh, the margins that I've set are 0.5. I've linked them together, so that gives me 0.5, which is essentially a half of an inch, all the way around the document. And that's the space that's between the black line, which is the trim line, and that line right there, which is your margin line. So that space in there is that space right there, the margin. The columns, I've set it to two, and I've given it a gutter of 0.12 IN, which is just a very small amount of space between the two columns. So those are my settings. Margins, 0.5 inches all around, columns two, and gutter 0.12. I'm going to hit cancel again because I'm only showing you this. That gives me that document right there. All right. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to create some text frames and I want to import the text. Now, I've already done that here. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an idea as to how I approach doing this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a guide down. I'm going to bring a guide down to about, well, it looks like we're not quite around three quarters of an inch. Okay, I brought a guy down to about this point right here, right there, right about there, okay? So I got this guide right here, and what I'm going to do is, to show you how this works, I've set up two layers, and I have on my first layer, I have my type on, on that layer, and th that means that all of my frames are on that layer as well. So if I hide the eyeball on that layer, then you see all of that is hidden. It's not gone, it's just hidden. So I'm going to show you how to create these frames. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the type tool here, because I usually use a type tool to create a type frame. I could use, the, uh, I could use either the um, rectangular frame, or I could use the rectangular tool to create the frame and turn it into a text frame. But the most direct way to do it is by using the actual type tool. And then I'm going to come over here. This is my 
this is my margin line, and I don't want my copy to go outside the margin line. So I'm going to click at the upper right corner of the margin line. I'm just going to drag a frame out until it reaches the other side, and it hits that line right there. There is my first text frame right there. Now, you can also see that the color of that layer is blue. The color of this layer is red. So when I deselect it, the highlighting, and I actually made this thing a little bigger than I want it to be, so I'm going to adjust that. That should do it. Yeah, the, the, the frame itself is red, okay? It's red. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create the two column frames next. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag a frame all the way out to the bottom and over to that column marking line right there. Now, there is my text column, all right? What I'm going to do to make the next column is easy. I'm just going to select that column. I'm going to go edit copy and then edit paste in place. And what I did essentially was I copied that frame and pasted it right on top of itself. So I'm going to hold the shift key down and on the lower right corner of my keyboard, I got four arrow keys. I'm going to start arrow keying that over. I wonder if I didn't, let me, let me see if I didn't get this. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. Hold the shift key down and arrow it over. Arrow that frame over until it reaches. And I now let go of the shift key and I'm just moving it into position. So now look, when I select this, you see how I got two columns. So I got a top column up here. Hold down the shift key. You can see I got a top column and I got two columns side by side. Now I'm almost ready to do my work. I got one thing more that I have to do. And that is I have to link this column to that column. The reason I want to link the two columns is so that the text will flow from column to column when I copy and paste the text in, okay? So what I do to do that is I click on that frame. I have this up here, which is called the import, right? I don't know whether it'll show. It's not. And then I have down here the outport. That's the outport. In order to link these two frames together, all I have to do is use my selection tool to click that, and then I come up here, you'll see there's a link icon that appears by my, um, my cursor, and then I click, and those two are linked. That's all it takes to set up that so that I have my, uh, my work uh, ready for me to actually import my text and start formatting. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hide that layer. And, or actually, you know what? Before I do that, let me, let me just bring some text in. Let me bring that layer back. All right, so I'm going to select this, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how to bring the text into this. This is the text that you are going to be using to uh, format. So there's actually two lines that are going to go up in the top. The first line is this, the art of typesetting. So I just basically slide over the thing, selecting it you know, dragging over it, selecting it, and then I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to go into my InDesign, click in my top frame, and go Control V to paste it in. All right, now for some reason I got extra space there. I'm going to delete that. Actually, look what it looks like I got for some reason. Let's go to the object menu, or I mean type Let's go uh, bullets and numbering, remove bullets. So somehow or other, I managed to get a bullet in there. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe there's a, a style here that's, that it's picking up. Nope, apparently not. I don't know why that happened, but at any rate, I'm just removing it. And then I'm going to hit enter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this, go all the way down to the bottom, go all the way down to the bottom. And there's a byline at the very bottom. It says, by the UI graphic arts department. So I know that's a byline, I know that's going into the top, so I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna come back into here, and I'm going to go Control V to paste it in, okay? So now I have the Art of Typesetting by IU Graphic Arts Department. That's basically all you have to do to copy and paste the type. To, to do the rest of this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select all the rest of the copy, like this, and you're gonna copy it, and then you're going to click on this text frame right there and go control V. And now I want you to note that since I've linked those two frames, the copy will flow all the way through here and it'll go all the way into there. Okay. So that's basically 
uh, what this is going to do, all right? So now you know how to do that. So I'm going to hide this, and I'm going to bring the type back. And the reason I'm bringing the type back in is because I'm going to actually work on this one. Now notice that down here, uh, there is a overset text. Uh, it's a red, the icon, the overset text is red, and it has a little plus in the center of it. That indicates that the overset text is going down into here. Also notice down the bottom, it's giving me an error message. Now if I click on this, and if I go to pre-flight panel, it says text one, overset text. And what it's telling me is text frame one. There's overset text in text frame one. So I'm only showing you this so that you get a sense of direction here and what, what you can do to figure out what's going on. So I, but I already know that there's overset text because I, I can tell. I mean, so I'm working on this, so I know where we are with this. So to fix this, all I'm going to do is click on this guy, select that, that overset text frame, and what will happen is if I do it correctly, my cursor will look like this, where it'll have a link and it'll show text. Then when I click on the text frame next to it, what it does is it automatically links those two together, and now I have my uh, copy in both of my texts, and I'm all ready to start doing my formatting. Okay, now my formatting involves setting up a series of styles for this. Now the first style, and there's a, a couple of ways that this can be done. I'm going to try to demonstrate all of them, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna open up my character styles and my paragraph styles, and I'm going to drag, I'm gonna to try to drag both of these out of here if I can. I guess I can't do it, I have to do it one at a time. Bring this out bring this out because I'm going to be using these a lot and then I'll nest them together. I'm going to be using these a whole lot here. So I brought them out. I also have my character panel and I also have my paragraph panel and up here on the top, watch what happens when I click that type. So I've got the art of type setting selected. I want you to notice that at the top here, I got this properties bar and the properties bar gives me the ability to style um, character and paragraph okay so basically what I can do is I can style here or I can style here all right or I can even style in here by coming in here and creating a new paragraph style and then I can come in here and I can just build my paragraph style this way I'm going to end up doing all of these uh, at least once in this little video. So wait and watch what I do. All right, so let's get rid of this thing. Uh, this thing just annoys me. It keeps coming up. All right, so the first way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this one using the, the styles that are across the property bar at the top. I happen to know that the headline for this is going to be, uh, what was it? It's uh, Arial. And Arial, what I'm looking for is Narrow bold, Arial, narrow, bold. And I happen to also know, and, and again, the, this, these instructions are in your um, actual instructions for the assessment. So you're going to read these and you're going to use these settings exactly the way they are in your, uh, assign, uh, your assessment. All right, so Arial, narrow, bold, and the, the size is 61 points. So I'm just going to actually select this and I'm going to make it 61 point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the tracking, which is right here. That's the tracking right there. It says that the tracking is set to 10. So I'm going to, I think, up arrow it. That's right. And I get 10. That is what your headline is supposed to look like. Now, this is set to flush left. I'm going to center align it because that's what it's asking for. And as I say, for some reason, I had this problem last night. It, it, it's a slight bit off center. Uh, for some strange reason, but the, the important thing is that you do you do your settings the correct way. Now, since I have done this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this as a paragraph style. Now, apparently, I don't know why I'm getting a paragraph style automatically. Let's see. No paragraph. All right, let me hit cancel, and let me get rid of this thing. Let me delete this thing. There we go. Delete it. Basic paragraph. There we go. Okay. Notice that when I do this, the basic paragraph has a little plus sign right there. So let me explain what's going on. I have set this, the art of typesetting, using my style that I, I put in uh, and 
I put it in because there's no other styles on what is called basic paragraph. I'm going to fix that by creating a style. And what it'll do is it'll create the style and remove those settings and return this back to basic paragraph, which is just what the type below it is. So to do this, what I'm going to do is, and remember, again, you're looking for the plus sign uh, to see that you've added to a style. Click on this, new paragraph. I'm just going to name this title, T-I-T-L-E, title. And it is going to be um, Arial plus Narrow Bold plus Size 61 point plus Tracking 10. Uh, it should also be center, let's see here, I don't see it in there, but okay, I can always adjust that. I'm going to hit OK, and now I'm going to delete this. Now I have this selected. There's title, basic, the art of typesetting. There it is. It's, it's basically set up, and I have that style. There's my, my style. So if I click on this, you'll see that I get this. What, what's going on? Override, alt click, let's go alt click to clear it. There we go. All right, now I'm not sure exactly why I'm getting that overset. Let's see what happens with that. Um, oh, I know why, I know why, because I have my little, let me drag this open, because I have my little byline in there. And my little byline, I think, got, yeah, see? I'm gonna click on this byline here and I'm going to set that to basic character. There we go. All right, so now I'm fixed. I got my basic character set up. This, this, ca this has to go down. I have to move this down a little bit. Let's move it down to about right there. I think that'll do. And let me move this down as well. Bring it down to there as well. And now I have a little bit of space for that secondary line. Okay, so there is my first style, the art of typesetting. That's the very first style. Now, the next style, let's, let's, let's close this frame up a little bit if I can here. Let me see if I can get that frame. There we go. Let me bring that frame up to about there. Okay, good. All right, now the next thing is the body copy. So the important thing to understand is that we're going to use the body copy for everything. All the copy on here, all this primary copy is going to be based on the body copy. So since this is a linked frame, we'll do this, this will be the next one we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a little bit of that copy. I'm going to go Control A to select all of it. You're going to use Command A, I guess, on a Mac, but Command Control A to select all the copy. Now I created my first style across the top here. This second style I'm going to create using the character and the paragraph styles over here. So let's go and let's open up the character style first. And this is going to be body copy, and it is going to be Times New Roman. So I'm going to choose Times New Roman. And I believe it's going to be regular. Times New Roman regular is what we're looking for. Yes. And the size is the next thing. The size is going to be 10 over 14. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the down arrow. It's right now set to a default size of 12. I need it to be 10. So I'm just going to go click, click, and now I have it set to 10. And you can see already that the type is, has basically um, uh, reduced quite significantly. And I'm going to set this back from 10. I'm going to go to 12, to 13, to 14. So now I have my basic type setting set up here. Uh, it's going to be a left align, which it is, and it's going to have a, a space after. Now, this is important. You can't get the space after, and that means the space after every paragraph. There's no space after in the character panel. You have to go to the paragraph panel. One of the reasons that we are setting this up as a paragraph style is because we're using formatting from the character panel together with, with styling from the paragraph panel. In order to do that, we need to create a paragraph style. So what I have to do here is this is the space after right there, the space after. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, yes, yeah, space after, and it's going to be 0.125. I happen to know that if I click this one time and two times, I end up with 0.125. And there I have my, uh, my two, my, my uh, 0.125. I have my settings for this. And I'm going to come in here. Notice again that the basic paragraph is what's being affected. The basic paragraph is being affected, and what I want to do is I want to turn that basic paragraph, the little plus sign, I want to turn that into its own style, 
and I do that by clicking here and I go new paragraph style this is going to be called body copy body copy and I'm going to hit OK and now I have that basic paragraph it's returned to basic paragraph and I just want to show you this that if I click on base while well, this is still selected if I click on basic paragraph it goes back to basic paragraph if I click on body copy however it goes back to um, body copy so there's my body copy and I have two styles now body copy and title the other thing I might want to do with this is I might want to actually stack this differently since this appears first. So what I would do on this is just like any pa panel, like a layers panel, uh, what I can do is I can literally just drag that up. And now I have the title first and the body copy second. All right, so there are two of my styles. Now let me close these guys up for a second. And let me close this. Now the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to deselect this for one second. And the next thing I want to do is I want to do a drop cap. This drop cap is going to appear in just the first paragraph right there. So I'm going to zoom in on this. I'm going to come in and I am going to get this thing positioned so that you can see what's going on here. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully come in here and I'm going to select the U, the very first letter U, and I even will zoom in a little bit more so you can see this. There is my U. It's only the U that's selected. Now what I want to do here is I want to call this, I'm going to create a style, and what I'm going to do, notice that right now the body copy is what's selected. So in other words, since that U exists in that paragraph, which is being governed by that body copy style, that's what's showing. Now I'm going to create a new style, and the only thing that's going to be different about it, it's going to be based on the body copy, but it is going to have a drop cap. That's the only thing different, and I need to call it drop cap so that I can create that style. Let's do it this way. This is we're going to build it right in the style. Uh, dialog box right here so I'm gonna click on this new paragraph style and I'm gonna call it drop cap oops drop cap there we go and body copy same style right now we have nothing going on here's what we want to do we want to go to let's see here indents and spacing where are we at advanced character formats no uh, where are we at uh, well it's a numbering where, 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 where? Indents and spacing I remember where it is always have trouble drop cap and nested styles there we go okay so drop caps that's what we're doing drop caps so what we want to do is I don't know whether I can get this yeah I guess I can all right so drop caps it's drop caps and nested styles lines this means how many lines do you want this cap to drop down I'm gonna make it three so I'm gonna click on that one two three and you can already see that this thing is going down those three lines and then I'm just going to hit okay and this always comes up which is very annoying and then I'm going to deselect this thing and now you'll see two things you got your drop cap right here and you have your style called drop cap so let me click on that style and let me show you body copy now if I want to show you drop cap there's drop cap it automatically comes up okay so I've now shown you how to create the styles on all three different methods using this area up here using these things here the panels over here and and building it right in here I have two more things to do and then actually three more things to do and then I'm done with this little video I hope this is being helpful for you so let's see what's the next thing the next thing is I'm going to create a um, a subhead a subhead uh, line so this is also going to be a paragraph style so let's let's do it again up here all right so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select one of my subheads right there okay the subhead is the setting type and I have two of them so let me scroll this down a little bit so you can see the other one if I can yeah there's one there's the other we're gonna create one and then apply it to this if I wanted to I could select both of these at the same time but I don't want to do that because I want to show you how this works all right, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to select this guy, and I'm going to go to uh, the drop cap. It's the same as the body, um, no, the subheading, I'm sorry. It's, it's going to be Arial Narrow Bold. So here I'm going to come up to here, and I'm going to go to Arial, and I'm going to come into the regular and change it from regular to Arial Narrow Bold. So it's Arial Narrow Bold for the uh, subheadlines, and it's going to be instead of 10-point, 
it's going to be 14 points. So it's going to be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 point. And then what it says is drop cap has subheading 14 point tracking. I'm going to set the tracking. There's the tracking right there. It says set that to 10, which I did. And then let's see what else is says here. Center aligned. So I'm going to change it from left aligned here to center aligned right there. Okay, and now it's center aligned. Now, if I come into my paragraph here, I can see that this is not aligned to the baseline grid, which is what it says it wants it to be. Do not align this to the to the uh, to the baseline grid. Okay, so this is not aligned to the baseline grid. Now, one of the things that I think I'm supposed to be doing here that I might have overlooked, let me go to the and, oh, uh, body copy. Let's go to, yeah, I'm up here. I gotta, I gotta actually make this a copy. So I make this a uh, style. So now that I've done this, now that I've got this set up, notice that the body copy, which is what it's based on at this point, it was like that, but now it's been set to look like that. So it actually is applied based on the body copy. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to create that style, the, the subhead. So new paragraph style, and it's going to be subhead, S-U-B-H-E-A-D, subhead, and it's aerial, narrow, size 14, narrow bold, size 14, tracking 10, alignment centered, and I hit okay. And then I now have that style right there. Okay, now what I might do as well is I may take the drop cap and I may bring the drop cap up above the subhead because the subhead is actually lower than the drop cap, which is up above it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to actually apply basic paragraph to that. And you see what happens? Now if I go subhead, that's what happens. And if I come over here to this second one right there, if I click on that and I click on subhead, I get that subhead. Now I've noticed something wrong with my settings here. My body copy doesn't have a line to baseline grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into body copy, double click on it, and I'm gonna go into advanced character formats. Let's see here, where we go. Actually, let me see. Uh, is it in justification? Let's see, I'm trying to remember where it is. I don't generally use it this way. Let's see, where would it be? Advanced character formatting, indents and spacing, there we go. Align to grid, and I want to uh, all lines. There we go. All lines, and hit OK. So now everything has been aligned to the baseline grid. All right. Now this here, let's see whether that has been aligned to the baseline grid as well. So let me select this guy. Let me double click on it to open it, and let's go into uh, where was it? Mm. Huh, forget where it was again. Uh, drop caps and nested styles. Uh, aligning, where is it? Columns. I can't remember where it is. I always run into problems with this. Indents and spacing. Yeah, align to grid. This one here, I'm going to set this to none. There, and then hit OK. And what that did was that removed the uh, subheads from this. Now here's that thing that is now that is now ready to go. That is now ready to go. All right, that that style is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is again come down to basic adjustments and I'm going to uh, change it from body copy which it's set to right now to subhead. And now that's set up correctly. Let's go view fit page and window and we basically have our um, our settings complete with the exception of our final thing which is our bullet list. And then of course we have to do the little byline. We're almost done. All we have to do is the bullet list. All right, so what I wanna do first of all is I wanna adjust this, oops. I wanna adjust this frame because I got a one word widow or one line widow up there. Uh, I'm gonna drag this open to here. Oh, come on, there we go. Drag this open to here. There we go. Okay, so now this is the way I want it to be. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go, let's go Command A. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I gotta go down, drag this down like this. Actually, you know what? Let me see if I can do this. Let me go all the way down like that. Uh, I got an idea how I can do this. Let me open that frame up. Let me see if I can open that frame up. Um, there we go. So now I'm seeing everything. There we go. So I had to open that frame up a little bit so I could see everything. So now I'm gonna select this whole thing. 
me come up here and let me select this whole thing. All right, now I got all of these, all of these uh, paragraphs selected. So here is my bulleted list. So the instructions for the bulleted list are as follows. They are going to be the same as body copy, and it's going to have a .125 in tab position, no space after paragraphs. So what we're going to do with this is uh, I'm going to come in here, and I, let me do it this way just for the heck of it. Let me start off by going to the type menu, and let's go to bullets and numbering list, apply bullets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to yeah, I got my bullets. Okay, I'm going to go over to my character. Let's see what I want here. Create a uh, space after paragraph. And I have to go to the, okay, I have to go to the paragraph. All right, so what I'm going to do is, and again, there's only two things that I'm doing here. One of them is setting the bullets, and the other is removing the space between the paragraphs. So I'm going to remove the space from after the paragraphs, and that's it. That is basically it. Now, the last thing that I have going on here is and let me go back in here and select all this let me select this thing here notice that it is set up to body copy that's the first thing it's set up to body copy and what i want to do is i want to turn it into its own style if this is the same thing that happened with all these other depending upon whatever style you're working on when you make adjustments to it it goes and shows you those adjustments have been made right there okay uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a style for this. So I'm going to come in here and new paragraph style, and this is going to be called bullet B U L L dash L I S T bullist and uh, left indent point one two five first indent dash point five inch space after zero list bullet. So that's what it's telling you the settings are. So I hit OK. Now watch this. Let me just quickly show you this. Now watch this. So here's my bulleted list, and let me zoom in on this so that you can see what's going on here. All right, so now I have my bulleted list, and I'm going to select this first one right there, just that first one, and I'm going to change that to body copy. All right, there's body copy. So it's now set to body copy. Now if I come down to bulleted list right there, watch what happens. It sets it back into bulleted list. So you can see all these things are working. One thing I want to do here is I really don't like the way that those bullets are hanging off there. So I'm going to fix that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this. Let me, let me go view, fit artboard, or fit page and window. And let me grab all of this copy, all of them. And I'm going to go to the type menu. And I'm going to go to tabs. And I explained this to you last night. I have these two little tab stops right there. That tab stop shows you where the copy is sitting, and that tab stop right there shows you where the bullet is sitting. Now, I don't really like the bullet in the position that it's in because it's way too far away from the font. I'm going to leave the font alone, uh, which means I'm not going to move this little triangle right there, but I'm going to move the bullet in a little bit. I'm going to come up here, click on that, and I'm going to drag that over, and as I drag it over, I can actually put the setting in there. Let's see what the setting tells me. Bullets, uh, 0.125. So I have it 0.25. I'm going to make it 0.125. And then you see how that moved in? By putting 0.125 in there. Do you see how all those little bullets moved in? That's exactly what they want. All right? And now that's been done. I have that. The bullets are just the way I want them to be. So there's two things left. One of them is to... Um, create a, a style for my first word. And this is, again, an inline, this is going to be an inline style. So I'm going to do that in my character style. All right. So what I'm going to call this is, um, I'm going to, new style, I'm going to call it first word bullet. First word bullet. And I'm going to go to basic characters, basic character. And what, what is it telling me? First word is going to be Times New Roman semi-bold. So basic character formatting, Times New Roman, and then the, the font side is semi-bold. I don't really have semi-bold in my machine, so I'm going to go with bold, which is close enough, and I'm going to hit OK. And then I have first word bullet. There it is right there. Now I have to apply that. I didn't really set any, any conditions for that, so I have to apply it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this thing, 
and I'm going to show you where I'm going to apply that. Get my type tool. I'm going to click on everything from font family to the colon. I'm going to select just that, like that, and then I'm going to click first word bullet and apply that style. And then I'm going to click this for font styles, first word bullet. I'm going to do that all the way down. I got to go font size. It's a little tedious to do. First word bullet. Letting. I'm going to go first word bullet again. And then tracking. And first word bullet. And we'll keep going down until we get all of them. It'll take a moment. And then first word bullet. Paragraph separations. First word bullet. And here. And first word bullet. And keep going down until I reach the last two and get them done. And first word bullet. And then first word bullet. Good. All right. Now that's that. And I can get rid of this. And I can get rid of this. And there you can see when I deselect this, I'll show you the, I'll give you the final look at this in a moment, but I just, I'm giving you a, a rough idea of how they look right now. So I'm going to come up to the top here. I got one more thing to do. And what we have to do is we have to format this line, the byline. I could probably get away with using a character style with this because there's no space involved in it. Okay. So all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a new character style. And I'm going to call this byline, B-Y-L-I-N-E, byline. And what I'm going to do is go to basic character formatting. And all I'm going to do with this is set this to Times New Roman. Is that right? Times New Roman? Yes. And it's italic. They want italic. And they want it to be a point. A point. And let's see what that looks like right now. Hit OK. And there it is. I select this. And then I click on byline. Oop, I got to select the whole thing, I guess. Byline. There. And there's my byline. Now let's go to the view menu. Let's fit this page and window. All right. Let me minimize this. And let's go to the view menu. And let's go to screen mode. And let's go to preview for a final look. And right there, guys, that's basically the assignment. That's what you're going to be creating. Um, I hope you find this helpful. And... Uh, Maybe I will see you tonight in the um, uh, multi-session. All right, so you have a very nice day and enjoy the video.